and welcome to the Blong Arena Clash recap show, Playoff Specials, where this week we'll be joining our casters in the Basingstoke studios to find their thoughts on the teams in the playoffs, the season so far, and the upcoming finals at Insomnia 62. It's been an incredible season thus far, so let's take a little look at the last five weeks. Oh, wow. Is this going to be it? One more hit, and what a comeback. Rizuke wallops the bad line. There's going to be a massive knock into the Emperor's Divide. Shockwave. Oh, what the four members? Cataclysm into the Emperor's Divide. It's a triple kill on the Wizard. Make that a quadra kill. But Lithium has Rocket Barrage available. They're going to push out into a devastating halt. Trying to find the back line. There goes the Nano Blade as well. He finds one, dashes on for a second. Two ahead of him. In comes the first. The second does fall. It's Kizzy and Tiger again picking up the pieces. Jolt's coming down from Regan. Maybe take down one, make that two. Six seconds for on the clock. Oh, ho, 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 ho. fantastic play from him. So, moving on, League of Legends has seen some incredible plays this season. Joining us in our Basingstoke studios is Hipbrain. Hipbrain, what are your thoughts on the season so far? Thanks, Rage. We've had a really great League of Legends season so far. All of the teams have been a lot more kind of close within their groups, and it's made for some really exciting League of Legends games. We have ended up with a lot of the teams we expected to be at the tops of the tables, but that's what makes playoffs so exciting. So, moving on to the playoffs this week, what can we expect? Well, the first game of the day, the Cardiff Saints taking on the London Lionhearts, is going to be really, really exciting. Golden Bladder for the Cardiff Saints has one of the most insane champion pools. He pulls out the Riven, he pulls out the Jacks, and just plays on sheer lane dominance. The same can be said for the mid laner, though, of the London Lionhearts, Godmid. Godmid, has, we've seen him playing Yasuo, we've seen him playing Zed, we've seen him playing Assassins and just really popping off and solo carrying the lanes from there. That's why I'm really excited to see this first game of the day, just purely off the insanity of the picks we can get. Thanks, Hitbrain. So, here we are into the playoffs. We have Cardiff Saints versus the London Lionhearts and Portsmouth Pirates versus the Humber Hunters. We'll be featuring highlights from both matches today, so let's get back to Hitbrain and get into our first matchup. Cardiff Saints versus the London Lionhearts. Godmid stepping forward, throws a bit of a combo out, but misses a massive amount of it. Gone and Bladder trying to take a trade, but Armadillo's there. He doesn't have the ulti, but the flash forward comes down and the damage to back it up. Golden Bladder gets first blood. Ooh, summer face clap. Here comes Godmid, goes in with the ulti. The shove comes through, and now that's going to be the dash out. Summer face clap is ignited. He gets picked off by Godmid, who's able to walk away. Vladimir extremely behind and just forced to kind of hard farm. Late game, he'll be okay. He needs some time though. He needs to hit that as Godmid actually getting engaged on. Concussive blows are coming through. The dodge comes out. Godmid forced to duck and dive away. Goes down with a Z ultimate. Goes all in. Trying to make the 1v1 happen as Summer Face Clap is ignited. One more tick as he thumbs up. Godmid goes 1v2 and trades one for one. Oh, hop over from Uphill Gardener. Gets him back with the ulti. Headbutt pulverizes there. That's going to be the ulti. Gets blocked away by that ADC though as Nasus is now being chased down. It looks like the Cardiff Saints are looking to get themselves the damage, get themselves the bot lane duo, but they duck and dive away. We see London Lionhearts walk out of that fight. Yep, that turret will fall to Godmid. As we're seeing the flash come forward, here comes Navbar. Some of face got Cataclysm and the Emperor's Divide forces him back. A fantastic play. Now Golden Blighter's going 1v3. Doesn't quite land the counter strike and he gets dragon striked into the backside. Meanwhile, Godmid was able to drop a turret in the mid lane. Tying up this gold lead, it's only 500 gold separating them. Got mid going onto Armadillo, who's going to have the blast plant to get him out, and the Rift Herald will get picked up by the London Lionhearts. They've got themselves their first neutral objective of the game. Rift Herald's actually getting cooled down. We might have a bit of a base race on our hands. The back's already being forced out. Godmid's going forward. Has popped himself out. The speed is there. Godmid's looking to catch out Armadillo as he gets cataclysmed in. Godmid now goes in and out of the fight. The damage is there, but I don't think it's quite enough to kill Armadillo. As that ADC is free firing away. They lose a the turret in the mid lane, but they do gain a kill in the top side. They're going to answer back one for one in turrets. Heels get forced out. Emperor's Divide forces them back. Me much IQ with a flag and drag, but he's going to get popped down and dropped out as Uphill Gardener's able to find the kill. It's going to be a double kill onto Tristana. Make that a triple. He's looking for the quadra kill. Can't quite find the Penta because everybody else dropped down. Navbar was bot lane solo that entire time. And a fantastic play from Uphill Gardener. 
Lulu walking towards Tommy M. Here they come. Flag and drag goes down. Cataclysm's available. Putting the damage down. The Wild Grove's there, but Tommy's pinned in place. The rest of the team can't quite connect the damage, and Tommy will get picked up. Me much IQ is able to get himself a kill. His first kill of the game, and now Godmid is going to try and punish Golden Bladder underneath his towers. Landed the slow, but the rest of the team pressuring into topside. This time, London Lionhearts are the team who've just been caught out. Their tier three falls and their inhibitor will be short to follow. Uphill has so much attack speed and so much damage to boot. Baron Nash is going to get started up by the Cardiff Saints. A miracle needs to happen if London want to keep their dreams alive. Ulti connects onto the jungler. They're going to go in. The Empress Divide forces them back, and Navbar has gone into the bush. He's trying to keep this game alive. Golden Bladder's got a ticking health bar, but he flashes forward for the kill. It's three kills over to the Cardiff Saints, and the London Lionhearts are left bleeding. Now Godmid's trying to go in for the 1v1, but he's in a 1v2. Tommy's there. That's going to be the death mark got thrown down onto Tommy, and he just blinks straight back out. London Lionhearts lose everything and they're going to potentially lose the game off the back of that play. Only Godmid and me much IQ remain. First turret falls at the Nexus. That will be the second one. Godmid's step forward, but I don't know if he's got the damage to boot. There's going to be enough damage and the Nexus falls. Cardiff Saints destroy the London Lionhearts. Game two is where it's going to get a little bit tighter. I think both of these teams are a lot closer. If we do look at the lanes, Aragon for the Humber Hunters is a really oppressive top laner and I'm excited to see what he pulls out, whether or not he pulls a tank or whether he pulls a carry out. But if we do look on the other side, Shaving Tortoise in the jungle for the Portsmouth Pirates, he plays very weird champions. He likes the Kha'Zix, he likes sometimes the Nidalee as well. Likes to play these kind of more carry style junglers. So if he could really pop off for his team, that could be the real deciding point. Hook's going to come down, Argyle's going to take it, Black Shield's on, looking to try and get the damage out as he gets the 90 caliber net, the Ignite's there, Argyle's under fire, his first blood gets picked up by Young, flash away from Flubber, the Ignite's down and the auto attack to follow, this is going to be a double kill for Young, but no, he gets bound up and Jordan is going to be able to walk away. Bindings here, here comes Professor Zen, Hook connects down, going to come down as Shaven Tortoise has entered into the fray, Argyle gets the first one of the fight, looks like he might see them turn around as Argyle's under fire, Zap gets dodged away, it's going to be a double kill onto the Caitlyn, as Shaven Tortoise now needs to be extremely careful, Ace in the hole is available, doesn't have the vision to find it though, and Shaven Tortoise will walk away with a blinking health bar, good for Hull at the moment as Rydona actually Looking to try and find some damage onto Aragorn, who takes a tower shot, does have the ultimate, the feast is available. Needs to try and bait out the riposte, he flashes forward, there's going to be it, he riposts the Floist! That's a massive outplay, but right, Dona still is trying to get the damage, the hero's entrance is there, and Aragorn is able to get the kill! 1v1, outplayed like a beast! Looking to get a bit of turret damage though. This is Hole coming forward. Jordan flashes in with the chains, tries to connect the ultimate down. Dora goes in. Dora looks for the colossal smash as Flub is free firing away. Professor Zen's under Dara. He's going to go down. That's going to be a second one onto the Jinx. He's got excited. That's going to be a triple, baby. Massive play by the Portsmouth Pirates to find a great team fight and a turret. Now we got Aragon pushing away. Needs to be a little bit careful. Repost away here is entrance there. Stun connects down. That's going to be the knockup. Ace in the hole to follow. Looks like actually they're going to get caught underneath their turret. Shockwave does connect down as Professor Zen's there. Nobody's fallen yet, but Divinus should go down. 90 caliber net shield, soul shackles. Everything is thrown down onto Divinus, and he is dropped. We got Raidona just off to the wing. Hanging about for a potential pick if he can. Twin Shadows have been thrown down kick. That's going to be Fresh's end going in. He goes in with a flash kick. That's going to be Argyle able to find a pill. And now they're getting turned around onto us. Divinus is going to get blown up. Ace in the hole secures a double kill onto Argyle. And a fantastic punish from Hull. Going to start the Drake up. Twin Shadows have come down for the slows. Jordan's in on side. Zen's just diving away from the damage. He's landed a kick onto Shaven Tortoise, and the Drake's on 4k health. That's going to be the ultimate cone in, and looking to try and punish away. Aragorn's able to find one kill. Ace in the hole is going to come down to follow. Dora looking for a bit of damage onto Rydona, but he's massive at the moment. Flubber's found one kill. He's now free firing away. That's going to be Shaven Tortoise with one. Flubber's got himself a double kill. Rydona's alive, and Dora's the only one left alive. A fantastic punish for the Portsmouth Pirates. They get themselves a double kill onto Shaven Tortoise, they get themselves the full ace and the Elder Dragon to boot. I don't know if these traps are even going to do too much for Hull at the moment. As 
This looked like it was their game to win, and now they're just in a horrible situation. Aragon has found out Rydona, however. Oh, look at the damage he's able to throw out. Gets all of the vital spots, and Rydona will just fall solo to Aragon. Massive 1v1 coming through from him there. But what can he gain in the meantime as the rest of his turret and the rest of his base is crumbling underneath the pressure from Hull? Free firing away from Flubber. He's able to put so much damage down onto the squishier members. And that will be inhibitor number two falling to the Portsmouth Pirates. Teleport's coming through, but I think it's going to be too little too late. Dora goes in with the taunt, trying to catch them out now. Going to see the redemption come out. Kit goes down onto Shaving Tortoise, but that's going to be a hit because Davinus is able to get the kill onto Joy. Shaving Tortoise picks up the next one of the fight. The resurrection has finally come through. That's going to be Flubber staying alive, able to try and pick up the last kill. And somehow Portsmouth have looked to pull this game back from the brink. Nexus is the only thing remaining as Aragon falls down. Shaven Tortoise comes out, it's a double kill on the Flubber, and the Nexus falls Portsmouth 2-0 over Hull. So, we have our finalists. Team Cardiff Saints versus the Portsmouth Pirates. GG to both teams. So, hit brain. What are your thoughts on the finalists? Well, not entirely unexpected as Cardiff versus Portsmouth. This is the third time in a row we get to see these two teams clash together. We've had two finals where Portsmouth have taken the win, but these have been best of threes. We're now switching up to a best of five, so the question is, now that Cardiff are in a best of five format, can they play upset with this brand new team versus Portsmouth? It's going to be really exciting to see the results at Insomnia 62. So thanks for that hit, Prim. We look forward to seeing you in the finals. And now on to Tekken 7, and we've got Eternal Dragons in the studio. Eternal Dragon, it's been a heck of a season so far. Yes, Stealth, it's been a pretty amazing season. Some of our highlights actually the emergence of the new players coming out. We've seen a great uh, uptake of people coming to the Belongs, getting involved. We've seen the new emergence of actually the London team as well. Uh, London team had a great team in the previous season, but now they've got new players actually joining the fold. The York team, e equally, uh, I'm happy about seeing them coming up, dominating from their side as well. And speaking of the new players, uh, some players that really stood out to me was some of the uh, Clyde team. Marvelous Ling was uh, very good in their set against the London team. Some very close matches there as well. The MK team, I'm wearing the t-shirt, you know. MK team have really put their, their mark on this series. They were in a very tough group and their first outing, I'm, I'm very happy to see that they only lost to the London team. So we're going to see more of them in the next season. I think this has just shown that UK Tekken has got a lot of talent and it's great to see everyone just getting on board with the Arena Clash. So on paper, at the beginning of the season, it was all about the London Lionhearts. Is that still the case? Well, I would definitely say you cannot count out how strong the London Lions are. But as I mentioned before, seeing uh, the York team really show that they are still in it to win. That They are trying to get back to that finals as well. The MK team have really impressed me. Portsmouth have had really good showing as well. Very good individual match as well. Very good names for people have coming out that haven't really got into Tekken, but now they've actually enjoyed the team format. So I definitely can say that the London team will always be the really solid team that are the ones to be, but you can't count out this emerging talent coming all over from the UK. So for next season, the seasons to come, we're going to really see them make strides, improve, and take it to the London team. Thanks, Eternal Dragon. So now to the playoffs. We have the favourites, the London Lionhearts, up against the Cardiff Saints, and the York Vikings taking on the Kingston Harriers. We'll be featuring highlights from both matches, so let's go back to Eternal Dragon and get into our first matchup. Lionhearts versus the Saints. We're just testing each other, goes low again. Right, after getting blocked the second time, he's going to have to start to mix up more to say, right, I can't just go for the low out in the open like that. A couple jabs and going low isn't working out for him. He's going to have to do some jabs and then get out of the corner. Get some wall splat. Nice spring kick there. Pass frames. Gets him with a counter hit throw. He's still in now. He's on rage. What's he doing? What's he going to do? Oh, that could have been a whip on an opportunity. Uses a rage drive. Goes for the throw. Not broken from Ru Kang. Oh, and he went low. No punish there. And he goes low. I said before, he's going to have to stop going for those big hits. Just straight like that. Ru Kang is conditioned to block low because he's been hit by well, those lows quite a lot. And it's working on a perfect. Going to go low again. Yeah, there we go. Low throw again. 
backing off. He went for a risky low again. Rukang, what a low parry. This won't do much damage because the low parry combos do scale quite a bit, but he's still in it. Oh, and he just get caught with a get up mid kick there. A little bit of skirmish there. Nice whiff punish there from Moon Majesty. Takes it to the wall. Doesn't try to get the wall splat there. That's, yeah, punish. He knows that punish will hop kick there. He went for the parry there, and oh, that was the wrong combo to do. Terrorize could have taken that if he just done the screw. And we have a slow mo. Jumps over the low. Goes low, and he's waiting for that. Drops a the combo there, and he gets hit with a hop kick there. Terrorize could get much more off of that, and for that he's going to pay. Staying composed, making a good comeback. There you go. That is a power of Katarina. Those lows who just rack up so much damage. And he's just going for the basic combo. And there's actually this sort of YOLO style, and he's just got a perfect. We managed to opt for the safe option there. Goes to the wall splat. Is he going to throw? Plus frames. He goes for the throw. Just out of range, gets it with a hot kick. In the back. One more hit to take it. Terrorize the can come back, but no. Just delays the string there. First combo goes to Blue Majesty. Takes it to the wall. Goes to an unblockable setup, and wow! That was just nice tech trap setup there. Right. He's trying to make a comeback now. Blue Magic goes low. Just goes for this mid pressure. He's got a race now. Get nice use of uh, Bull's roll to get out of. Uh, Harm there, goes for the mid option, catches him, and this might take it. Will he go for the rage? No, he doesn't use the rage drive. Goes for this health sweep, and that was so risky. Gets that punished, but that's not a big risk of getting those low punish. Oh, and that is what I was saying about the parries. Excellent parry there from Blue Majesty. Look at all that damage. Just tending him. What are you going to do? His back is against the wall. Nice low kick just to. Get the pressure away, and he gets him with the Demon Paw. So, going through the finals at Insomniac 62, we have the London Lionhearts. So now on to the second match of this playoff week. So we have the York Vikings versus the Kingston Harriers. The York Vikings were the runners-up from the previous season. Very strong team there. Sunny Boy, Buff Lars, and Pancake. It's really good to see that this team actually, like I said, made for the qualifiers, stayed together. So they have that team synergy, and they've worked together very well. Speaking of the Kingston Harriers, we have Pest Charlie, Misty, and I do apologize for leaving you out before, Lethal HT. Very good players individually, so it's good to see them actually join uh, forces and give this York team a run for the money. Goes to relax again. Almost at a chance to win punish though. Oh, gets caught ducking. He was taken to the wall. No, he doesn't get it, but he gets the running power bomb. Now, what's the mix up after this? Goes for the ground throw, not broken. Figure four leg lock. Gets caught out of the air and he goes for the get up kick. That could have been the death for Pez Charlie. They're both for rage. Rage drive wants to mix up now. Goes for the hot kick and he gets a rage drive of his own. There you go. He knows. Just pick him off the ground. Running power bomb again. Buff Lars is going to have to think about going into relaxance. Ground throw. There you go. Figure four leg lock. Not broken. Perfect. And that is a perfect. Nice duck on that throw. Perfect punish there as well. Running power bomb. He's got one more mix up, but he's working on a perfect. Goes for the low. He's just whipping a lot of moves out there, trying to catch him, and he does. Gets him with the screw. Right, King is on rage now, but Buff Lars has got full health, and he gets a perfect of his own. He keeps it just out of rage, so Pest Charlie doesn't have the threat of rage, and he gets caught ducking. And will Buff Lars take it off that? No! He hits him, this won't kill, it would do a lot of damage, but Buff Lars has still got one or two more mix-ups before this round is settled. He has to get up if he's going to go for the ground throw. Nice block on the low, an excellent punish from Buff Lars. Very well played. Gets him with a running two, he doesn't tech it. If you hold back, gets him with the unblockable, wow. That is just typical Sunny Boy. He just, the fact that he just went for unblockable just like that, amazing. He's actually... In trouble back against the wall though. Tries to go for the parry. Just need to keep it started. Rage drive. What's the plus frames? And nice space from Missy there. Side step. There you go. Reverse the position with some throws. Even if they break it, the position change is something more important. Mix up now. Excellent block from Sunny Boy there. 
slow mo. Oh, another one. Oh, double slow mo. Look at that. Oh. Blocks the low. He could have launched that, and he launches him anyway. Sunny Boy is going for those parries, and he's known for doing that quite a lot. But you have to be careful. The parries are just so risky to do if you don't have a hard read. And he goes for the throw mix up, and Missy takes over Sunny Boy. Wow. So we have our finalists, and it's a winter finals rematch. The London Lionhearts versus the York Vikings. So, Eternal Dragon, what are your thoughts on the finalists? Well, still, both teams dominated their groups, dominated in the playoffs, and we're going to see a revenge match. There is an interesting dynamic here that the York team, as I mentioned previously, they are, they are set. They are, they're a legit team. They've worked together, they've played together through two seasons now. So you see that they're going to have a really good team synergy. The London team is made up of killers really strong London team and this is a new team compared to the, the last season but equally they are scary to play against. Thanks Eternal Dragon. Now moving on to my personal favourite Overwatch and we have John in our Basingstoke studios. So for a grassroots esports tournament we've seen some pretty incredible Overwatch plays. What do you make of it? Thanks very much Jess. Yeah we've seen brilliant plays coming out across the board for all of these teams that have been participating in the Belong Arena Clash spring season. Some standout DPS players really bringing the heat. So I think from this point onwards, we're probably going to be looking towards the tanks and the supports to really bring us that high level of gameplay that we're expecting. So moving on to the actual playoffs this week, it seems like a pretty tough one to call. Certainly is looking pretty close. Let's take a look at these matchups though. We got Manchester Swarm taking on the Colchester Centurions. Colchester Centurions, of course, last season's champions. So they have a lot to go up uh, in this fight versus the Manchester team. I'm expecting quite a lot of players coming out from Howl Aloud, who we've been pegging this entire season as one of the strongest DPS in the tournament. Absolute demon in the skies on that Farah, able to wreak so much havoc when given that space to operate. If they can get through, if they can allow him that space to move, they should be able to take it home. Depends on the map picks as well, because we've seen how impactful Colchester can be on Ilios. Manchester allow that through could be cuts for them. Thanks, John. So we have Colchester Centurions versus the Manchester Swarm and Portsmouth Pirates versus the Humber Hunters. We'll be featuring highlights from both matches today. So let's go back to John Allen and get into our first matchup, Centurions versus Swarm. You're really strong showing just why they're so feared here on Elios Kirk. Already in the back lines with a nice pulse bomb. We'll find the double kill onto both Stav and Silver. And that is going to be overtime ticking, tick, tick, tick. Boom! The Colchester Centurions take control of the point and they are going to be able to take home the first round here on Ilios. The Howl Aloud's found a nice little flank and even though you might be a hit scan there, Widowmaker, but if you're up and close and personal like that, it's going to be very difficult for you to deal with the rockets coming through. That's AoE and that is a huge amount of damage going down onto the tanks as well. Rocket Barrage already, already popped. And once again, Howl Aloud, death from above because they are just going to wipe the push. As overtime starts to tick away, there goes the Diva onto the point, not even able to drop self-destruct sequence. They are pushing them straight on back, and Kirk will take the mech. There we go, Diva taking out the Tracer, self-destruct sequence to zone. Overtime ticks down, and Centurions take game one. Let's take a look at play of the game. We'll be howl loud over on that Farah. Creating the space up high. You can see already early on, up onto that point, just dropping so much damage down on the point and no one was able to deal with them. Pressuring up, trying once more to take the high ground. Defense Matrix being activated, how allowed. Rolling the damage on through and that's the Diva D-Mech already. They should be able to just pour the damage into the choke and they do just that. Plenty of kills going through with Doomfist able to just slam straight on down. Kirk trying his best to hold it, but will be shut down by the McCree yet again. A nice couple of headshots coming through. We'll find the Mini Diva as well. Manchester have a chance to get onto the point. Overtime taking away, but they've zoned Colchester off the point. They have it completely in the palm of their hand. They need to keep it rolling through. They need to try and stagger the respawns. They could be contested here, but how allowed down underneath. Only three HP left. Shouldn't be long for this world. And he is just going to be able to back off, but they aren't going to be able to get back to the point as Manchester take the first point. 
and they're starting to put some pressure on with the cart. They need to get as far as possible. Colchester Centurions, you can't give them any ground if you allow them to play up close. They will take everything they can get, but it looks like the Manchester team are going to be able to round one corner. Will they be able to find the second? I'm not so sure. As Colchester start to regroup, Howell out has that rocket barrage available. They've got the Valkyrie as well, and leading the charge, it's carry on the Winston. Will start to take the heat, and he will get the first kill. Rocket barrage as well. Will find plenty as the Void Boy at the back line will fall down. The res comes through, but it's not going to be enough as Kirk is doing so much work on the car. Manchester getting stopped in their tracks right now as Kirk is not done just yet. He will take down Stav on that Mercy. Howell allowed chimes in for one, for another as well. And that is Colchester Centurions holding it before the second point on Nambani. If they can zone Howell allowed off of that high ground, they should be able to have a little bit of a chance moving forward. Pulse bomb available now for Kirk. We need to coordinate with the rest of the team. He will be zipping around the back. He gives his position away as Carry does jump on forwards, goes for the healing button. And I think uh, Carry just jumped off the edge. Oh no, wait, it was in fact Howl allowed to get the kill, but there's the pulse bomb. Rocket Barrage as well finds yet another as they are just wrecking straight through the Manchester squad. A couple of well placed picks, and that's all it takes. Colchester capitalise, and they just tear straight on through for the first point. Pushing on through, Colchester able to get the self-destruct sequence, finds a second kill on top of it as well with a mini diva. Carry able to open up the space, Hyde trying his best to try and zone them off the point, but they're losing their players left and right. They can't sustain this for too much longer. Hyde will fall down, and now it's just a little Jamie left on the point. The mech will go down, and they push the card over the line. Colchester take the second game, they will be moving on to the finals. Let's take a look at the second matchup. We've got the Portsmouth Pirates versus the Humber Hunters. Of course, Humber Hunters very new to the scene. They are a new roster for this season. Unseen before, unknown quantities. The Portsmouth Pirates winning season one. They've been in every season so far. I'm really excited to see how the Humber Hunters are going to try and deal with this because of course being so new it's very difficult to know how they're going to play around that style, how they're going to try and elaborate on what they know they can get and what they know they can find in these fights. It's really going to be all on them. Whether they can take those grounds, they need to be aggressive, they need to be coordinated, and they need to be fast. They're wrapping around, they're going to try and push an assault onto this high ground position that is being held by the Portsmouth Pirates. They need to get through, they need to get that turret and move quickly. If they don't get through straight away, this is going to be shut down, and they are going to pull the trigger now. Flabberjack opening up with a coalescence, that's going to force the Pirates off the high ground. They've managed to get through, they've managed to take down the turret. Now they need to capitalize, drop down onto the point, and try and fight it down. And they're starting to rack up the kills. They've already taken down the supercharger, but Semp with a beautiful double kill on the self-destruct sequence. Leaves Pegasus allies in the back lines, but that's not going to last very long. They're already able to go through, but Semp has done so much damage in the meantime that they have no one around them. The Reinhardt might be swinging his hammer, but you have so many nails to hit that you're just too confused, my friend. Panshak will close it down, and again, they're forced back. 46 seconds left. Again, they're going for the same route through the Humber Hunters, trying to assault onto the high ground. This time they've got Earth Shatter, which is going to be very difficult for them to get through. They need to take it, but there's the Diva from the back. We'll just push them down straight onto the point. They can't go for it. Now Molten Core's been popped. They have so much to deal with and no way to do so. They need to try and get up to that high ground, but there's no way they're getting through. Pegasus with that tactical visor just demolishing the DPS. There's no way that they can continue this. They've got one or two players left standing, but they're just getting demolished left and right, and this is all she wrote, the pirates drop down, and they are going to be running away with a treasure on Nimbani. And they only need to get 33.5% of this capture gone down, and it is going to be off the mark straight away. Pegasus with the Widowmaker. Just bringing up the rear, trying to make sure they have the space to operate. Urulu on the Genji, already gone straight on in. He's taken very low, will actually get burst down, but already Pegasus and Carry Harry both finding picks. They've taken this high ground. This is the mobility I was talking about. They pushed on, they've got the ground, and they're turning it back down. I have two thumbs with the res, and they are just shredding straight through the Humber Hunter's hold, and it is not going to go well for them. They've already got the point, and that should be it. That should be the game. Once again, the Portsmouth Pirates with a beautifully coordinated assault, able to take the first point and take the game. You can see they're regrouping now. They're starting to push through. They're taking the side. They want to go up the elevator, but there's a lovely hook onto the Reinhardt. That's going to completely disrupt the front line. Semp already getting the pick will mean that they can push on through. They have to regroup now. They have got Amanda's advantage, but instead they're trying to keep the pressure up. They're trying to keep the ground that they gained, and they're trying to keep it through. But Carry Harry has other ideas. A couple of headshots dink onto the Zarya, and they will just get sent back in yet again. 
Try and get that Earth Shatter down as well. The Orisa Shield has been taken down now. He's going to look for it, but it goes up just in time. It will be able to save them out. There's no damage from the Earth Shatter there, but they're going to charge on through anyway. They're trying to get it through. The Coalescence able to find one onto the turret, but that's not going to be enough. Pegasus able to drop the tactical visor, but they're just getting shredded down. They're keeping the pressure on. Here goes the ultimate from the Diva. Will not find anything, but it will create some space for them. They're pushing on through. Lucky able to take down the Roadhog, so a massive force in the form of Semp. It has been taken off the board, and there's a flurry of kills coming through, and instantly it's just Pegasus left alive. Tutu Rishi has done absolutely massive amounts of work for his team, and it looks like he's not just done yet. He is going to completely zone Pegasus out, along with the Moira on his team. They're going to send them back. They will take the second point. It's just Flabberjack left trying to go for the tank, and they're starting to shred on through. Finally, the Pirates get their foot in, and finally they sort of slam the door shut as the Humber Hunters try their best, but it's going to be too little too late as the Graviton Surge comes through. The shutdowns come out, and even a Transcendence won't save you here. Give them a little bit of ground. Now they need to push on forward. You can see Reinhardt straight up in their faces will be giving them the maneuverability that they need. They're pushing on through and Semp will capitalize. He's already almost got his ultimate available. He's going to fall back heel and pop the whole hog. It's going to be brute force all the way through as the pirates roll it on out. And that's the first point in a devastating style. Looks like they're going to try and contest on this corner. And there we go. The Winston jumps out of the door. We'll start them out. Urulu forced on back, but it's already the Earth Shatter from Carry Harry, followed up by a swift kill. Semp as well in the front lines. We'll just start to zone them off, but Carry Harry is just devastating them from the front and leading by example as he swings his hammer to great success. The Portsmouth Pirates again take that second point. They will force the Humber Hunters back to their third point. They've got four and a half minutes left to try and push it on through. And they're starting to go for a push. The Biotra Grenade will stop the healing going onto Roadhog. And there's the Nano Boost onto the Diva. They're starting to mount their contest on the point, on the corner. And they will start to come it on through. Urulu finding two picks, but Epicry will shut it down. They're going to be forced back off the point. They don't have the front line to contend with the aggression now coming out from the Humber Hunters. They will be pushed to the corner, and they will be pushed back to spawn as well. They're looking to try and push it on through. Self-Destruct Sequence won't find anything. And a beautiful Earth Shatter finds Plenty as the kills start to rain through. Urulu is going to be doing so much damage to the players. Sprawled out on the floor. And they are just going to roll it on through. And up the hill they go. The Portsmouth Pirates charge it on to victory. They take home map number two. And they take home the game. So we have our finalists. The grudge match to end all grudge matches. The Portsmouth Pirates versus the Colchester Centurions. Will the silverware go back to Portsmouth? So, John, what are your thoughts? Looking ahead at the finals, honestly, I think Portsmouth, in my books, have a little bit of a better chance here. Urulu so strong on that Genji and those off-meta picks, really being a credit to his team. And of course, the tank performance that I mentioned, very, very strong. Whereas Colchester really rely on being able to operate around Howl Aloud. If they can shut that down on the Portsmouth side with the with a hit scan, with a strong hit scan that we've seen from Pegasus, I think that they're really going to have their work cut out for them to try and adapt, to try and play around that. If Howl Aloud can be allowed that free reign, as I've said time and time again, he will just destroy your entire team. So Colchester do have a chance in that respect. And of course, if they get onto Ilios, the rest of the team is, is incredibly strong as well. We've seen some great support plays come through. We've seen some great tank plays come through. And I'm really excited to see how they stack up. Of course, Colchester, the defending champions, were able to take down Portsmouth last season. So it's really all to play for on the grand finals. So, South, one title left, Call of Duty. And this season for Call of Duty has been a case of a tale of two cities. Strong teams taking on the weaker. It all boils down to the experience and the knowledge that these stronger teams have. You can tell the way that they set up for the next hills and hard points, the way that they position themselves and group together in Search and Destroy, and from what we've seen of Capture the Flag, very much how they are able to rotate and manipulate the spawns. Thanks for that, Chris. So here we are into the highlights. We have the Milton Keynes Enigmas versus the Craig Avon Crestrals. Let's see what Bakes is able to do. We can see shots coming through the wall. Bakes managed to pick up one. Unfortunately, he chokes the knee, but he has a teammate in support. Three of the players lined up in front of him. They're able to just swipe away at them and hold and maintain the spawns perfectly. Galleon in the mid-map area. will spot one player ahead of him, manages to get the kill with the hip fire, 
Notice there's one more player in the last hill who has jumped through the window. Again, we'll clean that up nicely. Another will challenge him. Will he clear that? He does. He is on a spree right now on five kills. Unfortunately, will finally fall to the nade from Pierce. Fakes picks up another kill. Continuing his spree now on five. Very close to streaks himself. Got to see one more ahead of him. Picks up that one and jumps into hill for another 100 points. That's now Fighter Pilot and Glide Bomb in his back pocket. He's looking at wanting to drop his streaks. Yep, Glide Bomb incoming. Where is he going to go? He sees one player pushing in the front. However, that player will fall and Galleon unfortunately takes down his own player in Bakes. But that doesn't really matter at this stage. They're up by 150 points. So good. Oh, Galleon. Stop it, please. Oh, three piece to his name. Eight seconds away from the win. Turner's now going to rotate towards Statue. And he's going to pick them all up. They try to push their way through front. He's going to pick up one. Gets the assist on the second. And as I say that, there's not going to be enough time. And that will be map number one to the MK Enigmas. He's going to dive on Bomb now. 14 seconds remaining. So very close. Oh, oh no, he doesn't know he's there. Oh, he does now. Gets the angle and will get the kill. Now has 32 seconds left on the clock. Sees him down low. Will he react in time? Goes for the repeat. Will get denied. I believe that was Snake once again with the kill. Two players do fall. However, one will fall for the side of MK. And that will be Bakes. Trying to push the way up to oh, Bell Tower. Does get shut down. Galleon now to take down one. and Didn't even check his left hand side. Not even a clue. Pushing right the way up into... Oh, he's pushed right the way into the box. He doesn't even know he's there. Oh, the shot. Oh, he is so fortunate that Snake was there to back him up because I thought that was going to be very, very bad. Two versus four in a matter of seconds. Bakes has gotten very aggressive out through mid. The glide bomb will come in. Snake is able to take down that player through the bunker and Bakes on the rotation around the back. Bakes tagged up with the... Naden, he doesn't... Pierce didn't even know where he was. Him versus Vito. Challenges him and you and gets the win. 6-1 to the MK Enigmas. Twist is pushed his way up through mid. Galleon has to do a hell of a job defensively. He's not able to do so. And now you can see that it's Twist running all the way home. He's going to get a flag cap. And this is great stuff from Gregovon. Galleon with the flag at hand. Will be able to escape with his life only narrowly though. But Galleon goes the alternate route and catches off the players as he's able to push his way through and tie up the game. Shots coming in from behind, but he's got to get this one away. This surely isn't going to be 3-1. It is. MK have just let it slip within the first minute. They're now down by two flags. This is not good. 31 seconds left on the clock. Surely there's not enough time for MK to pull this one back. It can't be. Shots have been fired. Turn takes down one. He takes down a second. That's the flag carrier down. In comes the return. 3-2 now. And oh my god. They've got the pull as well. Galleon with the flag at hand. They're now just clearing out. There's the spawns. There's no way. Bakes picks up one. Snake picks up a second. There's no way they're pulling this back at the very last. This can't be happening. In comes. Oh, Twist is on the rotation. He's picked it up and got the return at the very last. There's no way MK thought they had it, but get denied by Kragavon in the final second. Fantastic plays from Kragavon. We're going to map number four. Pushes his way out. There's 10 seconds remaining, so they have to think about the rotation. But look at that mini-map again. The MK Enigmas are just stacked already. Turn picks up two as they try to rotate towards green. He finally will get taken down. Shots will come in and Pierce able to take that down one. Not the second, unfortunately, as Bakes picks up a two-piece. The nade will fly through and Bakes will push in. Just left, right and centre shots are being fired. This is much more contested than it was the first time round. MK Enigmas are in cruise control. Galleon with a nade over the top gives him the information needed. Oh, there's three players ahead of him. They'll take down one, two, not take down the third. That's really quite unfortunate. Now you can see that there's just 15 seconds remaining. If they hold this down for the duration, that will be it. Surely Kragavon haven't given up already. I think Twist might have got 
a little bit carried away with himself. He hasn't realised that they can win off of this hill. Good contestion coming in from Pierce, but really, there's only four seconds remaining. They're going to hold this one down unless he can push through. Stigma's not able to do so. And there we have it. The MK Enigmas will progress to the Grand Finals at I-62. So we have our first finalists, the Milton Keen Enigmas, but who will be joining them? Let's get right back into it with Stealth as we join in the Guardians versus the Pirates. It's a rather balanced start as we kick things off. Tyneside just have the edge up by 20 seconds as the rotations do come in. Barker still in the hill, picking up so much time for his squad. That's another that will fall to his gun. His challenge from behind will finally fall. Nick still trying to push up through the front of the post. He's taken down from behind, not aware of his surroundings. But look at this. The continue in this spree. This is an absolute decimation coming in from the Tyneside Guardians. Nothing they can do. Jinxie picks up another one. There was another to his left hand side. He finally fall, but gets traded out by Barker. Nix picks up a two piece, but it's not going to be enough. You can see that there's 33 seconds left on the clock for this hill and only nine seconds needed until they've won. You can see d pushes his way through again, just clearing up the opposition. He does see another ahead of him, goes for the challenge, gets the kill, Nix caught unawares. And oh, Portsmouth just pick up a little bit of time. They're on the rotation. They've locked this one down. They're nowhere near to it. Tyneside Guardians take map number one. Jordy will be your bomb carrier. Two players immediately. Oh my god. What just happened? That's all over already. Jordy rotating back towards Bell Tower. He hasn't spotted the head of that player. Just to his right hand side and will get taken down. He's left all on his own. Barker takes down a second. A third will fall shortly after. And that's 3 0. I really don't like the way that Portsmouth are playing. They're playing way too passive and giving up a lot of map control to the opposition. Streaks are now available for the Bomb Panther. In comes Barker, who's able to take down two players as if they were nothing. However, his teammate has fallen. Oh, I'm pretty sure that should have connected. That would look like it was right on him. Picks up the second from you, though. Sees the another player at back, Bell. That is really quite unfortunate timing. Jinxie doesn't see the player to his right. It'll be next to take him down. Barker, though, look at this, the aggression. To what go on the flank, picks up one, sees a second ahead of him, gets the kill beautifully. Dietrich's actually picked up one previously as well. Mimo challenging that player inside of Bomb, but I think that might have been Dietrich's to get the final kill. Garmin sees one inside of Ruins, gets the kill, take down Jinxie. Unfortunately, he gets caught reloading, and Barker will trade that one out. I love the teamwork and the camaraderie between these two squads. You can see. That is easy enough for them to trade out the kills. But now, Wheat versus OJ Barker in a 1 versus 1. 15 seconds left on the clock. Wheat has to go for the defuse. He's going to get taken down from the side. Tyneside Guardians up 2 to 0 in this best of 5. They are just playing with the opposition right now. Certainly, they're in a comfortable position being two maps up, but this is a little bit too much. Barker does great defensive work to take down Wheat, who. Tried to pull the flag away, but Jinxie has run all the way away with this one. That will be a lovely flag cap for him. Picks up the flag. He has the support in his teammates in front of him. How did that Portsmouth player not even realise he was there? Unbelievable awareness, oh, or lack of, there. And 2-0 to Tyneside. This is getting a bit out of hand already. And the flag has been pulled once again. Barker continuing to just run things home 3-0 within the space of a minute 55 seconds d treats picks up another flag he's gonna run this one home makes it look easy and really this this is out of sight and out of mind already no way 5-0 barker in the opposition spawn is there he's picked up the opposition flag sees the player with the flag unfortunately he will get taken down has he done enough to deny the opposition, he has, because he's pushed it out the back of their map. I think that was d -treats. They will concede one within the last minute and a half. Really, it is Tyneside Guardians in absolute control. Mimo 
looking to try and get one last flag on the board for the half. Goes into extra time. I don't think he's spotted that player out of the back. Barker will take down the player, pick, pick up the opposition flag. The return will come in shortly. Or it won't. It will actually get picked up by the opposition. And there's the return, and there's the sixth cap. Only going to go one way, let's face it. The side of Tyneside Guardians in absolute control. We managed to pick up one from Bear. Challenges the second down low. That will be Barker will fall using the machine pistol. That's three players down, however, for the Tyneside Guardians. Three players down for the side of Tyneside. Jordy with the flag at hand has to stay back because the streaks are being used to thwart his progress. But the capture will come in. Now down by just four. I say just four. It's still a lot, if I'm honest. Especially when your players aren't aware that uh, Barker's well up your backside with a shotty. Got the flag in hand, running down towards P2 and Red Bus. Unfortunately, oh, is the opposition managed to return the flag? They have 6 3. How has he even managed to squeeze his way through? Nix will do insanely well to get away with this one. Is a player to his right inside, gets the shots off, does get taken down. And the return will come back. Or oh, it won't. Because they've actually managed to pick it right the way back up. Jordy's running around the outside of this one. Gets the return. And gets the cap. 6-4. Now just down by two. A minute remaining. D treats with flag at hand. Surely going to be uncontested as he pushes his way up. Sees one ahead of him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Wheat picks up two to deny the cap. But... Unfortunately, Mimo is there to just trade it out, pick up the return, and will get the capture himself. There's going to be a player to his right inside contesting him. Takes him down without hesitation. 20 seconds remaining. He has full streaks. Another capture on the board. Back to four. And that is going to be GG's in the chat. As it is just Tyneside Guardians putting on a clinic. And that will see them go to the Grand Finals in I-62 next week. Can't wait to see how these guys perform. So that's it. The playoffs are finished and the final teams have been decided. Joining us at Insomnia 62 next week are... The Milton Keen Enigmas versus Tyneside Guardians. GG to both teams. We look forward to seeing you both at the finals. So it goes without saying thank you to you guys for tuning in week on week to the Arena Clash. Next week, we'll be showing the finals live in their entirety on Facebook and on Twitch. So tune in there to catch all of the action. Don't forget to look at our Belong website as well to find out where your local arena is, what events are coming up, and how to get involved in the Arena Clash next season. You, yes, you could be playing for your local Belong arena, so make sure you get involved. But before we go, let's have a look what we have in store for Insomnia 62.